Hello, lovely people of the world. I'm Maria. And my name is Rory. And we are the hosts of the IELTS Speaking for Success podcast, the podcast that aims to help you develop your speaking skills as well as your listening skills along the way. Why have we started this podcast? Well, it's... Why? Why? Well, it's, it's basically because we're super cool and full of awesome and we want you to have the best of the best vocabulary and grammar for IELTS and for you to know what are some of the most common IELTS speaking questions. For a high score. The Super Ben 9 score. Summer is almost here and we're going to be talking about seasons. Rory, are you ready to talk about seasons? Seasoning? But we already talked about food last week. Not seasoning. Seasons. Ah. Yeah. Rory, which season do you like the most? Uh, I think I like summer the most, to be honest. The temperature's rising and there's the nice positive emotional impact of the sun. Um, yeah, yeah, it's definitely the best season in my opinion. What's the least favorite season in your country? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I suppose... Um, I, I don't think a lot of people like winter. Just because um, it's really cold and dark and miserable, it definitely has negative emotional impact on people. So I would say that winter is probably the most loathed season, in Scotland at least. You know, I think it's the same in Russia. I think it's the same everywhere. But do you, uh, do you, would you say that uh, winter in Scotland is the same as uh, winters in Russia? Oh god, no. Winter in Russia is like winter in Scotland on steroids. Rory, what's the weather like in your hometown? Uh, well, apparently, my hometown is the sunniest in Scotland. We get something like a hundred days of sunshine every year. I think this is because it's sheltered by the hills behind the town, and then we have um, nice sea, uh, sorry, a nice sea breeze coming from the coast that helps keep the skies clear. Do you prefer dry or wet weather? Um, well, I think it depends on what you mean, because I prefer to be out in dry weather. I think most people do, um, although I really like being inside so I can listen to the rain battering down. Um, it's relaxing and almost therapeutic. What's the best season for traveling in your country? That's a good question. Um, I suppose, um, because we've got quite a well-developed infrastructure for most of the country, um, you could travel anywhere at any time, really, and it won't be so bad. Um, so in winter, like, you can see the snow-capped peaks of the mountains, and in spring you get to see young livestock running around, and then in the summer you get to see the sunny beaches. Um, and then in the fall you can enjoy the different patterns of falling leaves. So, to be honest, there's not really a best season to travel. I think it really depends on what you're into. Rory, how do people in your country deal with bad weather? Um, it's kind of funny. Um, there's this weird distinction between Scottish people and English people. I'm not sure if it's real, but it's kind of like a joke the two countries have. So Scottish people always go out even when it snows heavily. Like we very rarely have snow days to stop people from going to school, for example. But it always seems like if there's ever a little bit of snow in England, people always seem to panic and close everything. Um, I think it's probably connected to infrastructure problems that they have um, in the south. But that's one of the things, like, it's kind of like a joke that comes up sometimes when we talk about how people deal with bad weather. It's interesting because uh, in Russia, in winter, when it snows, everyone is so shocked, like, whoa, there's snow! Like, it's it's been snowing heavily, oh my god, we've never had this before, so it's kind of... It's uh, the same It's the same in England. Um, I, again, it's like, oh no, we didn't know that snow happened in winter. <laughs> um, yeah. Although you could say the same for some parts of Scotland. Uh, we're sometimes not very well prepared for this either, even though you know it's going to happen. Yeah, but Rory, how do you manage winters? in Moscow. How? What do you do? I go back home to Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I know you're staying here. No, I go like I go back to Scotland for like a, a brief holiday, but I do spend most of the winter in Moscow. Um, and to be honest, it's not really that difficult. Um, you just buy a warm jacket and make sure you don't fall on any of the ice. It's fine. What's the hottest and the coldest place you've ever been to? I think for the hottest place. It's a toss-up between Ghana and uh, East Timor. I went there a few years ago to both countries. Um, it was just before I came to Russia, actually. Um, so, in uh, in both of these countries, it was like a really baking 40 degrees centigrade, and that was in the midday sun. So, that's like really, really hot. 
And the coldest, this is probably not much of a surprise to our Russian listeners, is in Russia. About three years ago, there was a winter um, there was a winter storm, and it was like minus 27 degrees when we were camping in the Russian countryside. Of course, that didn't stop us from going to the banya and having a party, but um, it was still like the coldest it's ever been, at least in my experience. You were camping outside in minus yeah, we 23? Yeah, we went to the camp. Oh, we were camp- right, not yeah. like in a tent or something. No, no, not in a tent, ah, but we were, okay. kind of, we were kind of camping. We just had a house instead of a tent. Does that not count? Okay, okay, yeah, that counts. We were, we were, we were glamping. Glamorous camping. Mm, minus 27, yeah. I've been to Murmansk and it was uh, pretty much minus 35. Yeah. <clears throat> when your eyelashes freeze and uh, your nose is kind of turns to ice... And you can't open your eyes because it's like all icicles on your eyelashes. It's fun. You, sh- you should try it out. <laughs> yes, you should go to Murmansk Quarry in winter. Rory, thank you so much for your answers. They were relaxing and therapeutic. Oh, thank you. Do you know what else is relaxing and therapeutic? What? Giving. Giving is relaxing and therapeutic. And that's why it would be very relaxing and therapeutic if our listeners gave us a like on Instagram and all the other social media we have. Yes, we have uh, Telegram, we have Instagram. You can subscribe and uh, see our faces. Um, Rory has a video up there. I'm wearing uh, some unicorn clothes. <laughs> so you can get updates, uh, help us decide on the topics and get answers to your questions. Rory, as usual, you've used the lovely vocabulary and grammar for a high score, uh, band Super 9 score. So when you talked about seasons, uh, you mentioned like emotional impact, right? Yes, I did. Uh, the emotional impact is sort of like uh, the emotions that something causes inside of you. Um, so, for example, if something has a positive emotional impact, it makes you happy, it's relaxing, it's good for you. Whereas if something has a negative emotional impact, it makes you sad, unhappy, and um, it causes you stress. We can also say that, for example, winters have a psychological impact on people. Yes, they do. Um, in, most, in most cases, like a very negative psychological impact. Yeah, impact like effect, like influence. Winters are dark, miserable. Miserable meaning like very bad. Yes, absolutely. Horrendous. Horrendous, that's a, a lovely word. What, what, horrendous? Like horrid? Terrible? It's, yeah, it's like really awful. Could you use it in a sentence? Yes, of course I can. Um, for example, um, on Monday the weather was horrendous because it was raining all day. And e- when you say that it was raining all day, it was like uh, heavy rain, we can say it was pouring. Yeah. Like P-O-U-R, it was like pouring down. Or battering or e- down, I said. Right, battering down, like B-A, right? How B-A-T-T-E-R-I-N-G. Yeah. Battering down, is it um, more like British English or American English? It's probably more British, to be honest with you. I haven't really heard it said in by many American speakers. Mm-hmm. We can also say like gloomy, like winters are yes. gloomy. And describing the weather, like how hot it was, we can say it was uh, baking. Baking, like you bake a cake or bread. You can also <laughs> it's say roasting. it's roasting. So there's lots of... Yeah, we were just talking about food, which is amazing. Uh, there's lots of food um, vocabulary and verbs that can be used to describe the weather. So it's baking, it's roasting, it's like an oven. Yes, so uh, when in Ghana, in this baking weather, uh, Rory was going bananas. <laughs> uh, it's not going bananas. I hate bananas. <laughs> yeah, to go bananas, basically to go nuts. Oh, again, food again, so to go crazy. <laughs> yeah, right? oh my God. And as we, as, as we all know, Rory uh, loves bananas, so in Ghana he went bananas. We also can say um, something about like uh, cold, uh, like freezing cold. In Moscow, it's freezing cold. Yes. Or we can say bitterly cold, mm-hmm. right? Or it's very chilly. Yeah, very chilly, right? But is there a difference between cold and chilly? Probably cold is more permanent, whereas chilly is something that happens in like waves. So you get the chills, for example. But it's a very minor, minor and very fine distinction in meaning. Yeah, yeah. So you can just open the window and say, oh, it's a bit chilly. Yeah, or it's a bit cold. Yeah, or it's boiling hot. The weather could be dry, wet, also humid, right? 
humid weather. Yes. For example, in uh, Thailand, is it humid? I would know. I think Thailand's one of the only countries I've not been to at this point. If it's like if there's if there's lots of moisture in the air, but it's very hot, then it's humid. And Thailand's like this. So yeah. So when you hear rain battering down, it's therapeutic for you, right? Therapeutic from therapy, right? Yes, yoga, um, anything that's relaxing or takes the stress away. So yoga, shopping, um, even shopping, exercise, strangling the head of recruitment to death—all of these things really it might be quite therapeutic. <laughs> right. Um, when you talked about Scotland, you did use some uh, very precise vocabulary. For example, snow-capped peaks. Yes. Right. So talking about mountains, right? Um, absolutely. Although I think a hill can have a peak as well, but you usually talk about a hill top, which is maybe easier to remember. Either way, they have snow on them. Mm -hmm. And also livestock. Yes. Oh, you can see livestock. What? What are they? Livestock. That's like animals that people keep for um, food purposes. So, or or actually for any kind of purpose. So like sheep are livestock because you eat sheep, but you also use their uh, fur. And uh, cows are livestock. You use the milk from cows and you use the, the meat from cows if you like beef. So yeah, that's all livestock. But livestock is only animals. It's not about plants. At least I don't think so. Yeah, Rory, do you know why in Ireland uh, cows are um, black and white? Why? Because they drink Guinness. Oh. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, dear listeners, Guinness, like, as you know, is just like black and this, this uh, uh, white froth on top. That's why cows in Ireland are black and white. Ha, ha, ha. Rory, you've mentioned a good one. It's a toss-up between Ghana and some other country that you said. What was it? Ghana and... Um, East Timor. Oh, okay. It's a small island, or actually it's half of a small island in the well, north of Australia. Mm -hmm. So it's a toss-up. So it, we toss a coin, right? Mm -hmm. And when you kind of, we, you don't know which one, so you can say it's a toss-up between. Yeah, it's kind of like it's divided between these two things. Dear listeners, now you can listen to Rory's answers again and notice all the juicy vocabulary and grammar he's just used. Rory, which season do you like the most? Uh, I think I like summer the most, to be honest. The temperature is rising and there's the nice positive emotional impact of the sun. Um, yeah, yeah, it's definitely the best season in my opinion. What's the least favorite season in your country? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I suppose... Um, I, I don't think a lot of people like winter. Just because um, it's really cold and dark and miserable, it definitely has negative emotional impact on people. So I would say that winter is probably the most loathed season, in Scotland at least. You know, I think it's the same in Russia. I think it's the same everywhere. But do you, uh, do you, would you say that uh, winter in Scotland is the same as uh, winters in Russia? Oh God, no. Winter in Russia is like winter in Scotland on steroids. Rory, what's the weather like in your hometown? Uh, well, apparently, my hometown is the sunniest in Scotland. We get something like 100 days of sunshine every year. I think this is because it's sheltered by the hills behind the town, and then we have um, nice sea I'm sorry, a nice sea breeze coming from the coast that helps keep the skies clear. Do you prefer dry or wet weather? Um, well, I think it depends on what you mean, because I prefer to be out in dry weather. I think most people do. Um, although I really like being inside so I can listen to the rain battering down. Um, it's relaxing and almost therapeutic. What's the best season for traveling in your country? That's a good question. Um, I suppose, um, because we've got quite a well-developed infrastructure for most of the country, um, you could travel anywhere at any time, really, and it won't be so bad. Um, so in winter, like, you can see the snow-capped peaks of the mountains. And in spring, you get to see young livestock running around. And then in the summer, you get to see the sunny beaches. Um, and then in the fall, you can enjoy the different patterns of falling leaves. So to be honest, there's not really a best season to travel. I think it really depends on what you're into. Rory, how do people in your country deal with bad weather? Um, it's kind of funny. Um, there's this weird distinction between Scottish people and English people. I'm not sure if it's real, but it's kind of like a joke the two countries have. So Scottish people always go out even when it snows heavily. Like we very rarely have snow days to stop people from going to school, for example. 
but it always seems like if there's ever a little bit of snow in England, people always seem to panic and close everything. Um, I think it's probably connected to infrastructure problems that they have、um, in the south. But that's one of the things. Like it's kind of like a joke that comes up sometimes when we talk about how people deal with bad weather. It's interesting because、uh, in Russia, in winter, when it snows, everyone is so shocked. Like, whoa, there's snow! Like it's it's been snowing heavily. Oh my god, we've never had this before. So it's kind of it's、uh, the same. It's, it's the same in England.、Um, I again, it's like, oh no, we didn't know that snow happened in winter. <laughs>、um, yeah. Although you could say the same for some parts of Scotland. That we're sometimes not very well prepared for this either, even though you know it's going to happen. Yeah, but Rory, how do you manage winters? In Moscow, how? What do you do? I go back home to Scotland. <laughs>、um, no, I know you're staying here. No, I go like I go back to Scotland for like a, a brief holiday, but I do spend most of the winter in Moscow.、Um, and to be honest, it's not really that difficult.、Um, you just buy a warm jacket and make sure you don't fall on any of the ice. It's fine. What's the hottest and the coldest place you've ever been to? I think for the. Hottest place? It's a toss-up between Ghana and、uh, East Timor. I went there a few years ago to both countries.、Um, it was just before I came to Russia, actually.、Um, so in、uh, in both of these countries, it was like a really baking forty degrees centigrade, and that was in the midday sun. So that's like really, really hot. And the coldest. This is probably not much of a surprise to our Russian listeners. Is in Russia. About three years ago, there was a winter.、Um, there was a winter storm, and it was like minus twenty-seven degrees when we were camping in the Russian countryside. Of course, that didn't stop us from going to the banya and having a party, but、um, it was still like the coldest it's ever been, at least in my experience. You were camping outside in minus twenty-three.、Yeah, we Ah,、oh, we right. Camp- not、yeah. like in a tent or something. No, no, not in a tent.、Ah, but we were、okay. kind of, we were kind of camping. We just had a house instead of a tent. Does that not count? Okay, okay, yeah, that counts. We were, we were, we were glamping. Glamorous camping. Hmm. Minus twenty-seven. Yeah, I've been to Murmansk, and it was、uh, pretty much minus thirty-five. Yeah. <clears throat> When your eyelashes freeze and、uh, your nose is kind of turns to ice. And you can't open your eyes because it's like all icicles on your eyelashes. It's fun. You sh- you should try it out. <laughs> yes, you should go to Murmansk, Rory, in winter. Our lovely listeners, we have Patreon, and there you can become our supporter. You can support us by donating one dollar a month. On Patreon, you can submit your own topics, listen to our episodes without ads, get monthly bonus episodes. And just support us, support me and Rory. Thank you very much for listening. The links are in the episode description. And we'll see you in the next episode of the season. Yay! I got in a joke. Yay! <laughs> Told you I'd get one. <laughs>、oh, what's the best time for whiskey? It's always the best time for whiskey. I'm on it right now. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers! Here's 